Uh, the other part, you know, if you're doing uh, electronics design, there's probably also some software that's uh, going to be important for the configuration of that uh, of that product. So uh, Winchell has its own uh, Winchell source code management solution for doing that. Okay, uh, but it might be more that you've got something else. You know, you're doing it in Subversion or or Jira or, or, or Git or whatever it might be. Okay, so you still want to um, capture that software in your build in your configuration. Okay, so uh, you could continue to use those tools. Uh, there are uh, there are ways to integrate into those tools as well. I'll point that out, but uh, most of our customers aren't worrying about that. They're just more, what we'll do is take the binary out from that, uh, you know, when it gets released from the software management side of things, we'll take that binary, store it in Winchell as a document, and then we can again add that into the BOM for, for our configuration management. So we've got that record of what happened over time. So as we go through that, so that um, the idea is then we build up this complete structure, okay? So, you know, we've got a mix of things. We've got our parts, our, you know, which is our structure item. We've got mechanical CAD, we've got eCAD, we've got other documents, okay? So it might be a case of you might start with some MCAD data like our golf cart. So now I've got a, a fancy electronic golf cart with a drive control unit that follows you around the golf course, okay? So we've got a mechanical design for that. There might be some drawings that go with that. We can go and check all that in. We can create a structure from that, okay? So we've got those relationships between um, the parts, those gear icons, and the CAD that describes it in a 3D model, okay? and drawings as well. So we might have our other 2D drawing CAD information, like our golf bag, which we can go and add into the structure as well. We could go and take our, um, our manual, okay, our documentation, so we can add that as into the structure and uh, relate that to documents that's stored in Winchell. We might have our software, okay? So we can create a software part as a, as a part subtype with its own icons, so I've done the, with the manual. And again, I can have that document, that binary file stored in Windchill and, and managed there and related as part of the BOM, okay? And then we can have all of our ECAD documents as well, okay? So schematic board derived data with the idea being that then we can also have those related back to the PCB part as well, okay? So it can be related both to the uh, 3D mechanical part as well as the electrical information at the same time. Okay, so let's have a really quick look at um, you know what this actually would look like. Okay, so if I just switch out to my browser here, ah, okay. So what this could look like in Windchill. So here I'm logged into Windchill. So I'm going to go and look at the structure for my uh, my Skyrider drone. Okay, so um. Here's my drone assembly. I'll just turn on the visualization that comes from the uh, mechanical design data. So there is my uh, there is my my bill of materials. Okay. So you can see down the bottom here, I've got a software part in here. Okay. We've got a different icon to help describe that. So I could show uh, the attached documentation related to that. So there's my uh, there's where my software document, my my binary file, my build file. Okay. If I go back and look at the top level. At that I can look at the um, attached documentation to the uh, the actual Skyrider itself. So I can see there's a CAD assembly, a CAD drawing. There's also a user manual. In this case, we're relating it directly to that. We're not creating it as a separate item in the bomb. Okay, if I look at the propellers, similar thing. I can start to see you know, here's the propeller specifications. Here's the propeller. Here's also because we're getting this um, supplied, we've got some different supplier parts for that. Okay. If I go down to the control module. Look at that, show related information. Okay, the control module, uh, sorry, the board further down. So under the board in there, I've now got a bit more of a complete structure. Okay, so you can see there's all my structure for the board that came from that. I've got the, um, the mechanical design there. I can see that there, the schematic and the electronic, uh, the PCB design in there as well. Okay. If I want to see a bit more detail on that, I can go into the into the board itself. I've even got uh, visualization of that. So we do have visualization of not just the mechanical data, but also the electrical data through Creo View. Okay, so I'll just show that real quick. Just log in. And, um, here's my uh, here's my ECAD information. Okay, let's bring it over here. So I can uh, view my uh, view my board design. Okay. So you can see I've got uh, all different information that comes from my layer information. So I could choose to uh, turn that information on and off if I want to see 
the important bits of information, the whole bunch of querying and other things that I can do uh, with that ECAD data. So as I said before, visualization is a big part of Windchill. It's not just for uh, you know 3D mechanical design data, uh, 2D documentation. We can also use Windchill for viewing and and uh, marking up and and querying ECAD data as well through the visualization side. Okay. So that's a really quick look at you know what a more complete bomb could look like. That's not just parts of mechanical data, but attaching documentation, software, ECAD data, you know, that full complete design of a uh, 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 bill of materials of all of that information. Okay. All right. So the last part, once we've done that, you know, then we can start to look into you know the bomb management side of things. So you know, this, this first slide is really describing what we're just looking at, that uh, complete holistic bill of materials. Okay, so we can create and manage the, the full product definition uh, with multiple bits of information attached to that to describe that. Okay, so that's an important part, getting that bomb and managing that. Once we've got that bomb, then we can start to do things with it. We can start to look at you know, creating, uh, using XBOM transformation to create uh, different views of that. So maybe we need a manufacturing view or a service view. Uh, so we can start to create uh, different versions of views of the bomb. You know, if we're doing manufacturing stuff, we could take the manufacturing bomb and then look at using that to create uh, manufacturing instructions, you know, process management, um, services, um, sorry, uh, operation instructions, work instructions from that. On the service side of things, we might be looking to create service bombs where we can start to define um, service parts and kits for spares and things like that, work instructions as well from that service side of things. Okay. And the other big part that a lot of people want to do is then start to integrate that into other enterprise systems. So we can look at you know, taking our bombs and integrating them into our ERP systems, exchange data, whatever that might be. Okay, so once you've got that fully complete bomb and generated that, then you can start to do all of that stuff with it. Now, these topics, you know, if you want to know more, we did cover off a lot more detail on those in the uh, in the webinar series we ran earlier this year that Paul mentioned. So again, you know, go back to the the blogging and see more uh, more detail on some of those topics that I discussed just there. Okay, so really that's what I wanted to cover off today is really just to show that ability of Winchell to incorporate you know multiple bits of data to create a more complete bomb. 